<clears throat> so you know my Instagram posts where I put stages of my life and it was the different stages I've performed on throughout my life? Yes. Did you see Bennington's comment on it? I didn't. He commented on the fact that, because I said stage one, stage two, stage three, and it was Dorothy Chandler passing the Playhouse. <clears throat> his very first stage where he got his actor's equity card was my first stage where I got my actor's equity card, which was at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. He said it was he, he's this, this, the connections with Mark are wild. So, hey, Mark, fellow thespian, love that. You're both old. Just Yeah, you welcome back to our stupid direct says Corbin. I'm a thespian. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks for Patreon, follow us Twitter account, subscribe to the like button. Today we have another video uh, from this same channel. Uh, say his name again. Ronick Mangotil. And, and I guarantee I've mispronounced this. The so, part sorry. two of the eight Indian box office flops that became called classics. Ah. Uh, we saw his first one. If you haven't checked that out, please go check that out. Go check his channel out. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, we like his content. Yep. Uh, he tends to put He's out a movie lover. stuff. So that's good. <clears throat> uh, so here we dance. I don't know. You can dance. If you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Well, if your friends don't dance, if they don't dance, they're no friends of mine. Hello, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Since you guys showed so much love <clears> for <throat> the first part and demanded a sequel, yes. here are eight Indian box office failures that became cult classics, part two. And I have to start this list with Shanak Shanam by the fallen genius Ram Gopal Varma. Sri Devi! Ram Gopal Varma spends most of his time sucking people's feet, but once upon a time in the 90s, the entire world wanted to suck, what? sorry, touch his feet because of the insane Must be a Quentin fan. Yeah. movies that he used to make. Tarantino. Tarantino loves that. Onto the scene with this blockbuster called Shiva starring Nagarjuna. He introduced a new genre to Indian cinema with Shanak Shanam. One of our first road movies where the main characters are constantly on the road on the run. The only like thing Bing Crosby and Bob Hope about this film in the middle of the narrative, it had four to five songs <laughs> stuffed into it, which may have been because of the market pressure for a second time director. But other than that, Shanak Shanam broke every single rule in the textbook of Indian cinema. And if you think that's an exaggeration, just watch the first film. 15 minute heist sequence which is full of silences without a single dialogue just oh that's cool incredible visual storytelling or the climax let us know if that one's worth a watch on a train seven years before chaya say at least every shot and every camera movement oh wow sachi did rye would be proud to the legend that rgv once was and maybe because he broke so many rules in a single film <clears> the audience wasn't ready for such an experience and it failed initially at the box office before going on to become one of telugu cinema's oh wow iconic Wow. From RGV, we go to one of his students, his protege, his gift to Hindi cinema. Anura Kashyap's yep. Black Friday. Imagine being one of the millions of people who land in Bombay. Once again, I think most of his films have been box office flops. In the yeah. world of cinema. Struggling for a few years without any money, without any resources, and then getting into writing for television serials, suddenly earning a lot of money, and then giving up all of that money just to become one of the writers on Ram Gopal Varma's Satya. And then finally getting to make their own film eight years after landing in Bombay. And that film runs into sensor problems and then never gets released because of additional financial problems. Then deciding to make a second film which starts winning awards all over the world, but right before its premiere in India, getting the news that the Bombay High Court has banned the film. This affected Anurag so much that he went into a drinking binge for years together. Unable to work on anything else until two years later, the film is finally cleared for release and it changes everything we know about contemporary Hindi cinema. You may have seen hundreds of gangster films, but trust me, you would have never seen something as raw, as detailed, as expansive as this and made on such a low budget as this one. Based on the 1993 Bombay Blast, Black Friday is one of the ballsiest Indian films ever made and there's no way- It's one of the ballsiest directors. Anyone yep. would even dare to produce such a film in today's day and age. Anbe Sivam, written by Kamal Hasan, directed oh, by... That was a, that was a box office flop, huh? It to box office failures that became... People love it now, man. <laughs> films are an entire... Inside not for us, but... Yeah, not for us. Entry, but people uh, love that film. Which initially didn't get the love. I think it's because it has a religious aspect to it that a lot of people... Anbe Sivam, which had such a simple story, good music, exceptional acting, didn't have any adult elements, and above all, one of the most feel-good Indian movies ever made. I have no idea why this failed at the box office. It talks about love, friendship, compassion, humanity, and the importance of seeing God in humans who practice all of these things rather than in idols or statues. And maybe that was what the audience... That's interesting that it was a financial flop. 
lot because of how much it's loved Especially now. Especially seeing the yeah. performance of part one of this cult classic topic. I understand that there might be a lot of North Indians amongst you. So if you haven't seen Anbe Sivam yet, please go check it out. But also, anytime you're wondering what to watch during the weekend or anytime you need the company of a movie or a TV show when you're feeling down, if you want to find all of my recommendations in a single place, you should definitely check out oh, it's, Nokia, um, a really cool app for movie Pretty Woman for the first time. Right oh, yeah? in India. Yeah. If you already yeah. use yeah, MDB yeah. or Letterboxd, this app is extra special because She's adorable. it's a lot yeah, more social. It's driven by your friends and the people that you follow. You can discover new movies and TV shows to watch based on your circle's recommendations, add stuff to your watch list, rate and love that film. And you don't just have to follow my recommendations. You can even recommend me stuff to watch. Like how Niveh Ravindra, he just recommended me to watch Pursha Pradham, which is a new Darshana Rajendran movie on Sony Live that a lot of people are talking about. Since the last time I spoke about Nokio in the Oscar video, more than 2,000 of you have started following me there, which is insane. So go and download Nokio from the iOS App Store or the Play Store. Try it out. Follow me there. Join this growing community of cinephiles and uh, let me know what you thought of it. Fan by Mani yep, Sharma. That one was a box office squad. All the power and all of the riches in the world. <laughs> we just watched that. You could go watch our review. Yeah, we have a review. We just watched it. Box and dictate what you can or can't do. And Shah Rukh Khan is probably one of the biggest examples of such a superstar who people accuse of doing the same thing over and over again, but reject him when he right. tries to do something different. I don't know what, what should I do? <laughs> For God's sake, I'm going to be a dwarf in the next film. What is a unique attempt that captured the dark side of being obsessed with a superstar with SRK playing the superstar and his own fan to twisted perfection. There are two particular scenes. One in the initial part of the film, the Dasera festival sequence where the fan Gaurav does a performance yeah. aping his superstar and another with SRK as superstar Aryan Khanna. This unassuming little scene probably in the second half of the film where he washes his face and he observes the wrinkles on his face. These two scenes are fine examples of SRK's acting prowess and his fearlessness to pick such roles that could potentially polarize his fans, which is exactly what happened. Fan was a super dark film under the disguise of a colorful commercial entertainer. It was an intelligent film trying to be dumb for the audience to understand, which is why the execution got mixed up. It had mixed reactions. It's a misunderstood yet unforgettable Shah Rukh Khan film that will be spoken about years from now. One, Neno Kudine by Sugumar. I'm going to be very, very honest. I think we've I seen a this film, action time, scene from I this. Just couldn't stop fight watching. scene? Yes, I think it's so. Over long. It has too many things going on in the narrative. There are too many distractions, and the climax feels like a cop out. But still, you can't ignore that Sukumar really tried to offer something new without pulling back any punches. Many people who watched the trailer of this film probably went into the theaters thinking that it's a hardcore Mahesh Babu action entertainer for the families. But unless you're actively invested in the story, unless you pay attention, <laughs> to second, it's definitely a tough film for the target audience to follow. Even even someone like Rajamoli told him that the audience has to be prepared for the world you're going to create, the experience you're going to give them. Yep. And even he had a few doubts about certain events in the film. Sukumar himself feels that he wasn't able to pull off his idea to its fullest potential. But despite its flaws, I would rather that a film try to go for a six right from the first ball and it's okay if it misses. But it's still better than a film that just takes singles in every ball of the over. Since the failure of Neno Kadine, even Mahesh Babu has been playing safe, taking singles in every film, even if he mostly manages to win every match. Lux by Farhan Akhtar. When you're in really? your early 20s, when you're about to finish college, almost every single Why? person goes through some form of existential crisis, uncertainty, and anxiety. The big the star no has a lot of patriotism. You just do what Act well you done. Yeah. Thinking, but you're also not a full adult. Maybe it's like Swadesh. The experience to That's face wild the to me. That life what a, what there a surprise. There are few Indian films that capture the state of confusion among the youth so well. And Laksh is one of the finest, most sincere attempts to do so. Maybe... Agree. Uh, too sincere. After the breakthrough success of Dil Chata Hai, fans probably expected Farhan Akhtar to make another fun film about friends. But right in the second film, he took a completely different route, telling a coming-of-age tale of an uh. aimless young adult, slowly changing from a confused caterpillar who refuses to take off to a what? flying butterfly. And I just wish people would let filmmakers and peaks that he would have of all disciplines to just create what they would like to create. And don't box them into your expectation. Yeah. 
performance of the film but 13 years later sometime in 2017 when Farhan decided to visit the Indian military academy the same place that he and Hrithik shot all of those iconic scenes from the first half where Hrithik's character struggles with the military training one of the officers at the IMA took him to meet a group of gentlemen cadets and this is what happened he said I want to show you something he took the mic and he asked he's like how many of you are here today because you've seen the film Lunch and almost 70% of all those cadets put their hands up. That is the influence of Lux. There are so many stories of young people who joined the Indian That's Army. That's what Top Gun did. That film and whoever didn't join the Air Force. Army, yeah. The film gave them some sense of direction, a sense of purpose, a goal to aspire towards. And if a film can have that much of an impact in the real world, suddenly box office doesn't. I think I heard Full Metal movie. Jacket had no, that effect another on older people too. Yeah, yeah. By Imtiaz Ali. A lot of people, a lot of times, watch movies on the big screen so that they can. That breaks my heart. That's not shocking, though. Life. It's not shocking. Because it's, it's an such a shame. It's an intimate film. It's such a beautiful what you see movie. On screen is another version of your own life. You've been through the exact same struggle as the main character. Not yes, the human condition. To pursue what you really want to do in life. Even you've cried yourself to sleep because you're not able to fulfill someone else's expectations. Yes. And woken up every single day just to wear a mask and pretend like everything else is okay and just blend into the rest of the world. Tamasha is that film for me. I got it. People like me. Show that first to off in the, Gossiga, but the rest of especially it. Especially to Ashley. The actual story of a curious, passionate boy trapped in a man's body being unable to get out because society has locked him inside and thrown the key away. There are people like me who love this flawed oh, film so I love deep. this movie. There's also another group of people who love to shit on the film, calling it problematic and judging people like us who love the film so dearly. They don't get it that for many reasons, it's not just a film for us, it's a broken piece of ourselves projected on the big screen. Since the poor performance of Tamasha at the box office, even Imtiaz Ali, even he hasn't been able to get back up and deliver his usual magic but just like Ved who takes so much time to finally come back to being his own passionate uninhibited self we're all rooting for Imtiaz's return as well and number eight is Uli Davaru Kandande by Rakshit Shetty. One of the greatest filmmakers to have ever lived. It's a Canada Akira film? Kurosawa. He made this film back in 1950. The film is called Rashomon and the speciality of that film is its narrative style which shows a single incident narrated by different characters from their own perspectives. Nice. Which makes you question what is the truth. This film mm. became so iconic that its narrative style started to inspire so many other films and it started to be called as the Rashomon effect. And we've seen the Rashomon effect in films like Kamal Asan's Viramandi, Meghna Gulzar's Talwar, Tarak ah. Chan Wook's Handmaiden and so many more amazing films. But Rakshit Shetty took it to a whole other level when he took the Rashomon effect, combined another favorite of his, which is Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, set it in a coastal landscape and a culture that's so familiar to him but something that we've never seen before. And what we got in the end is one of Kannada cinema's most inventive, most path-breaking films that has gained a hardcore cult following over the years. Udilavaru Kandante was way ahead of its time when it first came out, that but now looks like a Lopez film. Is much more prepared, much more ready for what's coming next. Rakshit is teaming I mean, up Rodriguez. with Bali Films, That's what returning I meant. as director and the star of Richard Anthony, the prequel and sequel to Udilavaru Kandante, starring the now iconic character of Richie. And this is most probably going to take Kannada cinema even higher than it already is right now. And that was the list. And if you really, really love movies, first, download Nokia, go and check it out. And secondly, go check out my online store, my merchandise brand, fullyfilmy.in. You're going to find a lot of cool t-shirts and accessories inspired yeah, by... Yeah, it's, it's always good. It's so crazy what does well and what doesn't do well. Yeah. <laughs> and what... Obviously, that just because something doesn't do well doesn't mean it's not a good film. Just because something does well doesn't mean it's a good film. Yeah. Like, but hopefully, and obviously, bad films do poor at the box office, yeah. and great films do great at the box office. That'd be a perfect world. But also, uh, everybody has different opinions on films, and yeah. that's that's fine, and that's great. Right. Uh, you can I can hate a film that you can love, and you can hate a film that I love. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. it, it it's just, you know, people have opinions and that's okay. But it's just, it's so crazy. Especially with something that you'd think just would make sense to do well. Swadesh. Laksha. Yeah. Like. Tamasha. Stars. That one makes sense because even though it has stars, it's just, it's an intimate film and like it. But the fact that this other, these other two had stars and they're patriotic stories. True. About India. True. About like. 
it's just like that seems like a formula that would just work. And there's a lot of factors, obviously. We don't know what and was going songs. on in terms of, of, of promotion. Yeah. A lot of times people just don't know a film was released because the promotion budget was very, very poor. That could be part of the problem. Um, also, when it's released, yeah. if it's released on a weekend with another big film, it can get lost in the noise of the other film doing well. So there's a lot of factors that can contribute to that. And there's always the films that for some reason just didn't do well and then they become beloved. We've mentioned them before. The original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. the the Rocky uh, Horror Picture Show, Rocky Horror Picture Show, classic. huge cult classic, did not do well at the box office when it first released. So honestly, uh, I, I never know what does well at the box office in uh, India because I, I follow Twitter, and so they they need to tell me now. But like in terms of regular films, yeah, I hardly never know. Like I just I'll watch something and I'll be like, oh, that was good, and I don't ever know if it did well. <laughs> Here, here's a good example for a movie that virtually no one knows about. Uh, and Drani and I had seen the trailer for it, and in a very funny twist, we went to go see it at at the Lemele in North Hollywood. This was last summer, and we're sitting in the movie theater, and the movie starts. And about ten minutes in, I turned to her and I said, "I don't think this is the movie," and it wasn't. For some reason, I thought the movie we were seeing was this movie. It's called The Outfit. We just watched it yesterday, and the reason I wanted to see it above all else is because it stars Mark Rylance, who's one of my favorite actors of all time. And it's a movie that arguably could have been in the conversation for a screenplay, some acting performances, but I don't think anybody even knows that film exists. You can watch it on Amazon. If you like movies that feel like they're a play that are incredibly well-written and have twists and turns you don't see coming and you just want to watch Mark Rylance be Mark Rylance... I don't think the outfit did anything in the box office. I think it was out for two weeks and left. It's a it's a very good movie. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, another great video. Uh, please let us know uh, your opinions on these. If there's others uh, that you think uh, deserve to be on the list, please let us know what those are. And if there's something that we should watch of on here that we already haven't seen, we have already seen a couple of these. Um, please let us know what those are down below. Just.